Hi, Kevin here once again. Today I want to share with you some solutions if you do winter photography, the weather's cold, but you get very cold fingers, colder than your friends, and you need warm gloves that give you both tactility on those small buttons and dexterity to handle a camera when it's really cold. So, back in a flash after this brief introduction. Well, what I have here right now in front of me is an array of lightweight products for warmer temperatures. We'll go through this, I'll swap out the table, we'll talk about the warmer stuff for the colder temperatures. So, two parts. And we're going to start with the basics, which is a glove liner. A glove liner is generally designed to be used underneath another glove. Don't use it by yourself, but I use them constantly. I, I use glove liners just as a lightweight glove. There's a very fine line between the two. Lightweight glove, glove liner. Um, the big difference I can tell you is that a glove liner is commonly uh, designed with less durability. Um, this one, I can, I can see light through this one. It's a loose fabric and if I hold up the light I can see right through it. Um, I, I don't know if this one is touchscreen compatible or not. But I would certainly use this um, underneath a glove in order to keep the nice glove clean and uh, away from sweat and dirt so I don't have to wash the expensive glove. I don't want to wash this one. Uh, I'm going to wash this one and if I have to throw it away because it wears out then this is still good. So these are more expensive than the glove liners. They're usually pretty inexpensive. Um, but some glove liners are durable enough to be used as just lightweight gloves. So the pair here that are blue, these are by Burton. Probably my favorite pair of glove liners ever. In part because they're blue. <laughs> like Henry Ford said, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. Most of these things come in black. Uh, these are gray, 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 black. Um, uh, you can guess why I bought these here. Um, so when I see uh, unique colors, I like, to, I like to give those a try. I bought these online as an experiment. Normally I try on a glove in a store before I buy it. I took a chance on these and they turned out to be great. But you can see the fingertips didn't la quite last. This one's okay, but these wore out. Um, so glove liners, probably not the most durable thing in the world, but uh, I use them constantly and they wear out and buy a new pair. I bought this, I, I like these so much, I went back and bought the same model a second time. Couldn't get them in blue. I did get them in gray. I'm still using them. They're in my coat pocket right now. These, these are probably retired, but I might put them in the car as a backup. Um, so this one here is by Black Diamond. These also work pretty well for me. I don't like them quite as much as the Burtons, but uh, this was a decent glove. I saved the tags on these. Uh, they're both old, so I don't know if these models still exist. This, the Burton was called the Screen Grab Liner because you can use it with a touchscreen. And the Black Diamond is called the Power Weight Liner Series. You'll notice that they both have pads on the index finger and the thumb. That's what touch screen compatible. The other fingers are not. Some gloves will be touch screen compatible on the entire surface of the glove. Some just have special pads here. So um, be aware of it. Uh, be aware particularly of those gloves that are not touch screen compatible at all if you really need that feature. Now this tag on this glove has something on it that you will find on some gloves. It has a little thermometer. It has a temperature range where they suggest this glove is comfortable and useful. And generally don't trust these numbers because particularly with the warmer gloves, the, the tag will tell you, oh, this, this glove will keep you warm down to this temperature and it's not true, at least not for my hands. My hands get cold quickly. Uh, I can get cold fingers at 45 degrees and some of my friends, they, they don't get cold fingers until it's 35 degrees. Um, that could be a medical condition 
of various sorts. The one you might hear more often is called Raynaud's syndrome. Um, Here's another one from a company called FRDM that has a unique feature. Well, it's not unique, it's uncommon. And it is a pop finger glove. I think it's marketed as a glove liner. I'm not sure. It might be a lightweight glove, but it has a pop finger where you can expose the bare fingertip. These three don't come off, but these two do. This glove here, it's kind of the Mac Daddy of pop finger gloves. This, I believe, is marketed as a fishing glove. So fishermen have to tie knots in fishing line. You need your bare fingertips. This one has uh, three pop fingers, and you can attach them back like that. Get them out of the way. This is by Palmith, P A L M Myth, Palmith. Um, it's a good looking glove, it feels pretty comfortable, but I don't use it that much because it has no insulation in it. I would, I'm probably more inclined to use just a glove liner. This glove is only marginally warmer, it is more durable. The fingertips aren't going to wear, wear through if, if I do this. Um, I don't believe in this particular model that the fingertips are uh, touch sensitive. They're not going to work with a touch screen because they have a pop finger instead. So you probably got to get one or the other. A pop finger glove is unlikely to be touch screen compatible. It doesn't have to be. It's one or the other. The next thing I want to show you is a half finger glove. It might be called a, a three quarter finger glove or a something along that line, but um, it's a matter of how long are the fingers. Well, they're not full length. I call these half finger. They go up to about the middle knuckle. Um, if they're a little bit longer, they might be called three quarter gloves, but um, obviously you have bare fingertips and you don't need touch screen compatibility because your fingers already have that. Um, but I might combine this with a glove liner. This is a glove liner by REI. It's comfortable, fits me well. And I could put that underneath here so I get a double layer of warmth on the body of my hand, but the fingertips are just the single layer. Uh, so I wanna give you a few tips about this very quickly. Number one, uh, I do not get compression gloves. You know these stretchy ones that supposedly one size fits all and you put them on your hand and they're very snug. Don't do that, at least not for me. Because my fingers get very cold, it's vascular constriction. The blood vessels are tightening up and I'm not getting as much blood flow, which is why my fingers are cold. If I get a stretch glove, it's gonna make that worse. So avoid uh, avoid stretch gloves, avoid those one size fits all stretchy things. I don't do that. Uh, second, uh, do consider combining different products together. You don't always have to find a single product that's going to uh, do everything for you. If we go back to uh, this this uh, glove liner, it is, this might be a lightweight glove. I'm not sure. I, it feels like a glove liner, so it, it doesn't. It's not really durable. I can put it underneath a glove, or I can put it underneath a shell mitten. This is very small, very lightweight. You can't even, that's how small it is. And this one in particular, I believe is windproof or rainproof. This is from REI. And probably what I'm gonna do here is if I'm hiking into some remote location, I'll have the shell on. If I'm standing around at a sporting event and, and I'm not, my body's not moving, it's not generating heat, I'll have the mitt on. But when it comes time to use my camera, I'm gonna ditch the shell, stuff them in my pocket, and use the lightweight glove. So it's kind of a convertible solution. Here's another one. This is from a company in the White Mountains of New Hampshire called Ragged Mountain Sports. So another tip I wanna give you is if you do use mittens of any kind, uh, always get oversized, because you lose the ability to spread your fingers, right? Um, the mitten is constrictive. I always get, uh, it, to, to fit my hand, I might buy a large, but this is an extra large. So I always want, I always want that extra bagginess to allow my fingers to spread apart and to, to wrap around the camera and get it all of the buttons. Now, the half finger glove, you can get convertible into a mitten. It's called a glove mitten or Glomit!
It is literally called a glommet. It is a half finger glove that converts into a mitten. It's a glommet. This particular implementation has thin slate insulation, has a Velcro patch so you can keep that thing tucked back. There's a problem. The thumb. This doesn't open. I, it's got a heavy fabric on the front. It's like a, a leather pad here. I have very poor tactility and it doesn't open up like the other four fingers do. So this doesn't work for photography. Let's look at another one. This is also a glommet. This is by uh, Cabela's called uh, Guidewear and it's specifically labeled on it Windstopper. This is a windproof shell but unfortunately there's no insulation in it. So it's still the same design. Notice the thumb. So unlike that other pair of gloves I can pop the thumb out. This is a better solution for photography. Unfortunately it has no insulation in it. So with this glove, I'm always going to wear a glove liner underneath it because it's really not that comfortable. It's, it's basically a shell glommet. So we, we've seen shell gloves, shell mittens. This is a shell glommet. But if I put a glove liner under it, you can have any color you want so long as it's black. Uh, you see, my fingertips are not directly exposed. Now, for me, because my fingers get cold at like 45 degrees, this is a better solution to never have exposed skin. That's, that's good. But in actual use, I didn't find this solution particularly appetizing. First of all, you have to be careful to get a glove liner that is touchscreen compatible because I don't have bare fingertips. And um, there's a snap that holds that back if you want to do that. Um, I, it, it's not quite warm enough and it's really not that much better than just having uh, wearing a lightweight glove or a glove liner. I should mention these these little things here. That's, that's to help you get the glove off which is helpful. Some gloves have that. Not many do. Um, this is a half mitten. Notice that this has no fingers at all. See? No fingers. This is a half mitten that converts into a full mitten. It does have a pop thumb. So, a little bit different. Um, the, the idea of a half mitten is sometimes used by uh, musicians in a marching band. If you're going to play a wind instrument like a clarinet or a flute, you need your bare fingertips. So, this kind of thing works well in that environment can work well for photography. I would always put a glove liner under it because I don't want the completely bare finger. That would be bad. This one also has a little pocket on it. If you have chemical heat packs to add additional heat, it has a pocket that you can slip in there. But I need to mention one other thing about this because I stumbled upon this by accident and it's important for any of you flying an aerial drone for photography. Uh, the one I just showed you before, this one has this, you can fold the mitten back and attach it with a snap. This one uses a magnet to hold it back. And this actually caused me a problem as I was holding on to my drone and I'm trying to get it uh, to initialize and it has to calibrate its compass. It got confused because I had a magnet in my glove. So uh, if you're going to be flying an aerial drone with a compass in it, don't wear gloves that have magnets in it. Uh, never would have thought of that. Okay, I've got a different set of gloves here. This is for colder temperatures. Let's take a look at these. We talked about lightweight gloves, half finger gloves, like glove liners, all that lightweight stuff for mild temperatures. Let's get colder. And well, before I do that, I want to mention these. These are lightweight gloves. These are not the warm ones. They're just fleece. You know, that fuzzy type fabric, just fleece. Um, but I love these gloves for two reasons. One is the fabric. I've never seen this before. The, these are the coolest looking gloves I've ever had. I would buy another pair if I could find them, but I don't think they make them anymore. But I love the look. And they wear like iron. I don't know why, but these gloves are like six years old and they haven't worn out. They're super tough. They, I don't see any reason for it, but uh, they did a great job. These are by Patagonia. And I, if I could get another pair, I would. 
let's look at the difficult problem that we're trying to solve as photographers, which is this glove that I use for shoveling snow is not going to work for operating this camera. The buttons are too small and on the fingertip there's too much insulation and it's, it's like a, a leather or a faux leather fabric. It just ruins the tactility. I can't, I can't feel through it. I can't, I, I even have trouble just opening the, uh, the display panel on this camera. So these gloves, just the bulk and the material and the way they're stitched together, just, they just don't work. So they're great for shoveling snow, but for photography, they're useless. Let's look at this glove. It has less insulation. It's not particularly warm. I'd call this a midway glove, probably. It is a, it looks fairly typical construction on the outside. It's a woven nylon material. This is by Marmot. But what got my attention about these gloves is what's used on the palm. And I thought I might actually modify these gloves. I showed you before something called a pop finger glove, where you can just expose your fingertips temporarily. And because this is not a woven material, I thought I might be able to just cut a slit across the fingertip when my finger's not in it. Cut a slit here and convert this into a pop finger glove. Obviously, I haven't done it yet. I'm still thinking about it. I'll keep those. Those gloves are still... I could probably operate this camera with those gloves, but uh, I don't use them for photography. This is an interesting glove. It also doesn't work, but I wish it did because it's cool. Um, this is called a split mitten, otherwise known as a lobster claw glove. And it's interesting uh, because of several reasons. These two fingers are in a pocket together. They help keep each other warm. There's, there's like a microclimate, and it's warmer than having five separate pockets for your fingers. This is warmer. It's somewhere in between a mitten and a glove. I love that. It's a great idea, but what they do is they get this clunky stitching right at the fingertip. It gets in the way of operating the camera. Um, it's also not compatible with a touch screen. Uh, so it's not going to work with this particular camera. Um, but I love the concept of a split mitten glove. I hope somebody today, uh, today, someday, comes up with a version of this that will work for photography. That would be great. Here's a glove. That I, again, I wish this worked with my camera. But um, this is probably the warmest kind of around the town, everyday use glove that I have. And it's uh, I have the tag here somewhere. It's for, it's called heat holders, and on the inside is this. Uh, it's not fleece. It's like pile. It's almost like uh, the the texture of wool. They're very warm. I'm not sure what they use for insulation in these things, but they're thermal gloves. They have a woven natural uh, fabric on the outside. It makes them into kind of like a homemade. So it's not uh, one of these uh, nylon shell things. It's like a knit fabric. Um, they're just very comfortable and very warm. They, they're a little bit slippery. If you have something with a smooth surface, it doesn't grip real well. Um, this camera is not particularly slippery, so it, it works okay. I don't have a problem handling this camera. Uh, but it, it's not great on these little buttons. I, I don't quite have enough tactility here, so I don't use these gloves with the camera. Um, other than that, I, I do like these gloves. I would recommend them for uses outside of photography. Let's look at something that actually works. Here's a glove that I use, and I use a lot. This is uh, from a company called Spider, and I believe the model here is the Touch Glove. I also think they've modified this glove since I bought it. This is about three years old. It's changed a little bit, but uh, I, these gloves work for me. First of all, they have, um, a, they have a moderate amount of insulation in it. It's a little bit more on the back than it is on the front, so it doesn't get in the way of tactility on the fingertips. I can operate this camera. I use this quite a lot with an aerial drone. The controller for the drone has these control sticks. You don't need any special gloves to do that. But a lot of the camera settings and other settings are provided by clamping a cell phone underneath and now it's all touchscreen stuff. These gloves are touchscreen compatible. Sometimes they don't work real great. I think they're getting a little bit old. Um, 
probably replace them with a new pair to, just to improve the touch. Because um, it works, these capacitive touch screens work by conductivity. And, you know, if you don't have a glove on, and you, the, your finger is conductive, and that's why it works. Well, the outside fabric of your glove needs to be conductive, so these are touchscreen compatible. I use it a lot with the drone. I use it with other cameras. It's a medium warm. It's not super warm. It's a, call it a mid-weight glove. And to protect them, I might wear a, a glove liner of your choosing, uh, any, any glove liner you like, and put that inside so you don't get all sweaty and dirty on the inside of the glove. So I really like these gloves. That's from Spider. At last, we've talked about a glove that actually works for photography. In very cold temperatures, here's a solution that I've actually used. And this is a product from Outdoor Research. You often see the logo OR. And this is called the Meteor Mitt. Um, see if I can match up the... Uh... So, first of all, I would start with my favorite glove liner whatever that would be. So this is not, this does not come with the meteor mitt. So I would put this on first and um, I, I generally encourage mix and match products if you can. If you can find a glove liner and a glove and they, and they work together, they're not sold together, but sometimes you can come up with combinations that work really well for you. So pick the glove liner you like. This is the middle layer. This is the half finger, uh, excuse me, half mitten that I showed you before. It's not, it's not a glove. It is a, a half mitten, and uh, the thumb, you can get the, the thumb pop, it's open too. The package says they last for eight hours. I don't believe that for a second. They're good for maybe four. Um, now these gloves actually have the, uh, the half mitten here, it has a pocket right there where you can insert one of these heat packs. Um, I'm gonna show you, if you don't have that, I'm gonna show you what I did is, um, I wear the glove, normally you would have it in, in half mitten mode or in full mitten mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it, my fingers in half mitten mode, I'm going to leave this at the back of my fingers. I'm going to put this in, wait, it's in the outer package. You, you open it up, it's a, little, it's a little bit smaller than this. You put it in there. Now it's resting on the back of my fingers, see? So I would get this assembled. Put on the outer mitt. Now once my hand is in here and I'm in full mitten mode, I can just sneak my fingers out and there. My fingers are outside of the mitten. They're in half mitten mode here on the palm side. But that full mitten is right here against the back of my fingers and I've got one of these heat packs in it. So I've got heat against the back of my fingers. And to make it even a little bit better, I took a second one and I just dropped it down inside the shell. So you get these two parts. There's a half mitten. I put a heat pack in here and the shell. I put another heat pack inside the shell and you get this nice little warm climate that uh, it works pretty well. Uh, my fingers were still cold. Um, but it worked. All I can tell you is that I've tried this solution and it works in extremely cold temperatures. It's a little bit difficult to operate the buttons on a camera, but what I was shooting was a large DSLR. It wasn't this small camera. And um, I guess that's one of the things I'll have to recommend to you is if you're going to be out shooting in very cold temperatures, don't use a small camera. Use one that has uh, buttons that you can feel through your gloves. So that's my first solution for cold temperatures. Let's get a little bit colder. We're going battery powered. This is a glove liner with a battery for heat. This one in particular is made by Thermo Glove. There are many brands out there. There's at least a half a dozen brands that sell very, very similar products that come either as a glove liner or as a glove. And the difference is with the glove liner, I'm going to use these inside of my favorite gloves. So let's go back to the spider glove. It was a nice glove to start with, but I'm going to add some heat to it by using this battery heated glove liner. And now I've added quite a lot of degrees of colder temperature. I can get much, much colder temperatures with this combination because I've added that battery heat inside. And the battery is on, uh, I'll, I'll take this back off for a second. 
Uh, the battery is in here. Here's the here's the left hand glove. And you can see the plug coming out of it, and here's the battery. It's in a little uh, like neoprene pouch, and you charge them up and uh, plug it in. You tuck it into the pocket, and then on the back of the glove here, there's this button. If they're if it's charged, is it okay? So it's got three colors: red, green, and blue. And red is the warmest, but it's not going to last as long. So if you put it on the lowest setting, I don't know, you might get like six hours. Uh, if it's on medium, maybe four. Uh, on its highest setting, red, I can feel it warming up already right now. Uh, on its warmest setting, you might get two hours out of it. So uh, if you're going to be outside for an extended period of time, you'd have to carry extra batteries or go to a solution based upon these heat packs. Um, because they're not going to last all day long. They won't do that. Uh, but I do have to warn you that this is a glove liner. And I've tried to use it just as a lightweight glove. Just as it is. Don't do that. <laughs> I tried it and you won't dig it. This is, it just radiates heat out into the atmosphere. And it doesn't keep my hands warm. I, there's the uh, heating elements in this particular glove. Let me, let me turn that off just by holding the button down. The heating elements in this glove are on the back of the hand and across the back of the fingers. In other gloves, they do it differently. You might have a glove that heats along uh, the perimeter of the fingers, like this. And some gloves only heat on the back of the hand right there. Don't buy that. It's not good enough. You need f heat in the fingers. I bought this particular pair of gloves because they heat along the back of the fingers. But if you use it outside of uh, an outer glove, it just doesn't work. So if, if you want... Uh, if you want a battery heated glove, get a battery heated glove. If you want a glove liner to work with your other gloves, then do that. But uh, don't try and wear the liner just uh, by itself. It doesn't work. And um, let's go even warmer still. I'll keep this glove liner on because that's the way I would normally do it. And this is a battery heated mitten. Much the same as the battery heated glove or glove liner. This one has a slightly stronger battery. You can see it's, uh, it's, it's like two batteries that are stuck together. So you get a little bit more power so you can last longer or get them warmer. And I have another video, look for it on YouTube, where I'm using, I, I believe I'm using these gloves with this camera. And I'm outside in very cold temperatures. I'm trying to operate the buttons. And I can just barely get away with it if I if I point my finger. There's not a whole lot of insulation on the palm side of the glove, so I can actually get away with doing this. It's not great, but it works. It's not touchscreen compatible. It's not going to work on that. But I have a separate video to show you this camera, which has a capacitive touchscreen, compared to a very similar camera that has a pressure sensitive touchscreen. So in very cold weather, the pressure sensitive touchscreen is better because you don't need a glove that you don't have to be compatible with it. Um, obviously, if you're going to be using your uh, smartphone, your cell phone or a tablet, then I think all of these today are capacitive touchscreen. So you need a glove that is touch compatible. But some other displays, maybe on some cameras, they're not uh, capacitive. They are pressure sensitive. So look for that video at the separate um, these gloves are the warmest solution I have for cold weather. They will work with most equipment, but not touchscreen. Uh, I think they're great. They work really well. A um, little bit warmer than a battery heated glove or a battery heated glove liner. So that's my three solutions for very cold temperatures. The combination, uh, I should mention, uh, don't, don't rest your gloves on top of the a snow thrower because the engine is hot and you might melt it. It's just theoretical. I wouldn't know, but um, yeah, um, don't rest your gloves on top of the snow thrower. This uh, combination that I showed you with the half mitten and the shell, that is the Meteor Mitt by Outdoor Research. This battery heated glove liner is by Thermo Gear. There are other brands out there. They all have this similar uh, three color button interface. And this particular, uh, the warmest solution I have here is the battery heated mitten. And this is by Venture Heat. I hope all of this is helpful to you. Some gloves that 
don't work, <laughs> you, you probably figured that out on your own, and some solutions that really do work. I hope you get the chance to get outside and photograph in the wintertime. See you next time. Bye.